Have you ever wanted to go on a vacation but not known how to get started? Mark Leitzen states in his article, Tourism Economic Impact, that American travel and tourism businesses earned about $200 million in 1983, making travel and tourism the second largest industry. This means that if you are someone that answered yes to the question, you are not alone and there are a large, large amount of people in the United States that have similar interests. I am credible to deliver this speech because I have spent time reviewing articles that closely relate to the topic of traveling and vacations. I have combined information from several sources and created relatable and relevant information to share with you all. In this speech, I will inform you of budgeting tips and travel destinations. I will also include tips on how to plan a vacation in order to be effective with your time and money. Now buckle up as I travel through and explain how to decide where to vacation. Deciding where you want to travel is one of the first parts to tackle when planning a vacation. According to the audience analysis, the majority of the class prefers an adventurous vacation, and when traveling, 75% of the class answered that they usually stay in a hotel if they're out of the state. What type of vacation you would like to make for yourself, and what type of accommodation you prefer, are two things to ask yourself when, considering, when asking yourself the question of where should I go. Also, from the audience analysis, I combined all of the responses to the question, what is your ideal travel destination, and the top three answers were Greece, Bora Bora, and Florida. Rachel Cruz states in her article titled, How to Plan a Trip on a Budget, that on the surface, this may seem like the easiest and most fun part of your planning process. This tells us that there is actually a lot more that goes into the that goes into the decision-making process than people think. Cruz then goes on to state the three questions that you should ask yourself when trying to narrow down your destination. They are, which destinations fit within your budget? This may be like taking a road trip just across the state or to like Wisconsin Delta or something, or going on a trip across the country to Greece. Um, the next question is, does your destination affect whether or not I plan it myself or hire a travel agent? This kind of goes along with the first one, where if you're going traveling to a place that you've been before, you would, you would be able to plan most of it by yourself. But if you're traveling to a foreign country or somewhere that you don't know a lot about, traveling a, uh, hiring a travel agent would be very effective. Um, the next question is, um, will you drive or fly? Michael Macy writes in his article titled Smart Traveling that if you want to go some, somewhere where nobody has ever gone before, you will probably be disappointed because somebody has already been there. This is good because if you're going off the beaten path, you can learn from those who have headed off in the same direction. This can be going somewhere that you've never gone before and not knowing where to go to dinner. So you look online and there's hundreds of other people that have gone on a similar vacation and have ask themselves the same question you're asking yourself. Now that I have narrowed down where you now that you have narrowed down where you want to travel, let me inform you on how to plan your vacation. In Cruz's article, she provided seven steps to planning a trip. Her first step is to plan your trip budget. She recommends you determine how much you want to spend on everything from hotels, gas, souvenirs, a ho um, excursions and other things like that. She recommends you determine how much you want to spend, or she tells the reader to choose the top places you'd like to go. Once you have done that, you can use the price you set previously to narrow down the destinations. Once you know where you want to go, Cruz suggests you research flights and dates. She then reminds us that everybody knows that flights are going to be more expensive around the holidays, but there are actually a lot more factors that go into this. Fourth, Cruz says to look for deals. She then explains and says, make sure you look for bargains after you've set the budget, and this is for two reasons. First, once you know where you're going and how much you want to spend, you'll be able to look for specific savings on specific excursions and like restaurants. Second, it's a big morale boost to see that you're coming in under budget when you find a deal. Cruz's fifth step in, plan in trip planning is to start saving up and use your trip as motivation when you're pulling a double shift or taking on extra work. Cruz's second to last step is to create your itinerary and ask yourself what types of excursions you wanna do. 
She tells us to do this with also keeping in mind what the weather will be and not planning tiring trips on back-to-back -back days. This can also be staying, when you're, if you're staying in like one city and you wanna do two excursions in a place that's two hours away, plan those on the same day so you're not wasting time driving. Cruz's final step is to go and enjoy your trip. Vacations are meant to, meant to be fun, so planning ahead takes away all of the stress. An article by Michael Hawfield titled Americans on Vacation states, the exhibition is divided into four main parts, planning the vacation, getting there and being there, the vacation experience, and remembering the vacation. By considering those things, you are guaranteed to have a successful vacation. Now that the trip is planned, there are a few more things to take into consideration to make the trip as cheap as possible. In the article titled, The Social Psychology of the Potential Problems in Family Vacation Travel, the authors Paul Rosenblatt and Martha Russell state that, each year, millions of families in the United States leave home on a family vacation. This means that there are a lot of families spending a lot of money on these vacations. The article, Six Money-Saving Travel Hacks by Carrie Renzulli provides six hacks that people like you and I can use when traveling so we can save some money. The first of the six ways Renzulli provides is check discount websites for airline tickets. Next, she reminds us to accept a little discomfort in the air. She says to not concentrate on the flight as much because when you're, once you're at your destination, it'll all be worth it. So this means to not spend $200 on that first class ticket that you're going to have the little extra leg room for two hours because that's just a very small portion of the trip and you could use that money on money on other things like other excursions that you'll remember for longer. She says, but the third the author states, always carry on. This is referring to luggage and saving money and always having your stuff with you and this could also be not having to worry about losing your luggage and wasting time once you arrive your, at your destination to try to track it all down. Her fifth and sixth steps are to don't skip a must-see solely because of cost, and the sixth is to embrace the planning part of the fun. By using all of those tips provided by Renzuli, families can save a great deal of money and ultimately they will be able to travel more. Not only will they be able to travel more, but they'll be able to do other things while they're on their vacation to make it um, worth their money. Now that I've provided you with the knowledge on how to go on a cheap and effective vacation, I hope you will use what you know now when planning your next getaway. I will leave you with a quote from Michael Macy's article titled, Smart Traveling. It is, travel smart and travel safe. There is a big world out there and it is a joy to discover. And thank you for listening to my speech.